In this video, we're going to show you how to splice in extension wire. In this particular case, we have 2811, which is a three-wire protocol, and we're going to use some three-wire extension. This is our Holiday Coral 18-gauge extension wire. And what we're going to do is we're simply going to take the wire. Now, I have gone ahead and tinned the wire. So let me show you how I do that. So the first thing I'll do, go ahead, just cut off the wires, take some dikes using the uh, flat edge away from the end, just pull them back, and we end up with nice clean lines there. Uh, for simplicity, you could also separate these and then combine them together uh, by twisting them. And that makes them stay a little closer together, be a little tighter if you'd like. All right, so once we have that, we're going to go ahead, take our soldering iron. Uh, in this particular case, I have a digital soldering iron, but you don't necessarily need that. Any general soldering, soldering iron will work. All right, so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and tin these wires. And all I have to do is I've got the wire iron wire warmed up. Just touch that onto the wire while I'm then feeding in a little bit of solder. It lays down just fine. Now I have three tinned connections. All right. Now, they're a little bit long, and that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and just trim them back just slightly. Now I have about a little more than an eighth of an inch left. Now, for our strips. Now, our strips almost always come with a cuttable indicator, and it's almost always going to be where there's copper showing. So on this portion, we have the PCB, or the uh, printed circuit board, and then this portion is where we can cut it. Some actually have little pictures of uh, scissors. And what we're going to do is just simply cut it all the way through, including, in this particular case, the tube and the um, uh, circuit board itself. So now what we're left with here is just a little bit of circuit board. Now, I cut back a little bit further here, and I cut out a small section to give me a little little room to work with. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put something down here just to hold it flat so it stays in place while I solder. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just tin the connections by putting just a little bit of solder on there. Just heat it up. It's going to put a little bit of solder on there. It's just a little dab of solder. Not too much so that they run together. Just so it gets started. So there's our connection. Wire's not on yet of course. Uh, then what we're going to do is take our wire Alright, we're going to take a wire here, move this around here. There we go. Got to get it off. Of course, it works better when it's all flat. Alright, so we're going to take a wire. Now, first you want to make sure that you know where you're soldering the wires to. Now, there is no standard for wiring. Red could be positive, red could be data, red could be clock, black could be data, black could be positive. It, it, there is no standard. So come up with your own standard, come up with something that's logical, it, whatever works for you. But in almost all cases, on the circuit board themselves will be listed what they are. In this particular case, this WS2811 strip has 12 volts, data. Now it actually has DIN, which is data in, and then they have GND, which is ground or negative. Now in this particular case, I have a cable that does have wire, and it has red, black, and green. Now, I'm going to make it easy on myself. I like the traditional American standard of red is positive, black is ground. So, I'm going to go ahead and just solder on here the 12 volts onto that section there. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to solder on, may have to bend this around a little bit, solder on the ground to the ground connection. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to solder it on. In this particular case, it looks like it's going to be easier if I come up through the wire. And I'm going to solder on the data. Now you may also have a clock signal uh, in that too, but it varies depending upon the type of chip you're using. Now, so I've soldered them on. Now, this is a silicone tube with circuit board inside. It's not injected, which makes it much easier to solder. So you think, okay, well, what do we need to do to seal that up? Because I can't just leave that out in the weather. 
And that's true. You can either put silicone, caulk. So this is the caulk you get at the store. Just get the clear stuff and just put in a nice liberal bead right into here. Cover up some of the wire. Flip it over. Make sure that the back's also covered. Should have a nice little tail coming off. Now that's one way to do it. Uh, my personal preference is, is to uh, do hot glue. Make sure you use a non-conductive hot glue. Um, but whatever works best for you, um, you know, find something that works okay. All right, so in this particular case, we've hooked them up. I'm going to go ahead and in this uh, controller here, I'm going to select the 2811. And here we go. You can see that it is now working. And we'll run this through the different modes. So you can see how incredibly easy it is to solder this on and create turns. So if you need to go a 90 degree turn here, no problem. You can make a 90 degree turn. If you need to go an extension, no problem at all. You can do these in literally just a few seconds or minutes at best. So don't be scared by the fact that you may need to solder uh, RGB strips. Uh, it's a common thing and it's very inexpensive to do.